Hi everyone, so here I'm going to continue talking about uh, methods of measuring Q, heat, and remember in the previous video we ended by talking about there, there are two ways to measure heat, which is you can measure the heat under constant volume condition, in which case the Q that we obtain there is called Q sub V, and that quantity is exactly equal to delta E, which is remember the quantity that we're looking for for a chemical reaction. But more often, the heat that we measure for a chemical reaction is actually heat measured under constant pressure because it turns out that it's fairly easy to do this and that heat that we measure under constant pressure is given the symbol Q sub P and that quantity is uh, called a new quantity which is enthalpy and that Q sub P is referred to as the change in the enthalpy which has the symbol delta H okay now what we want to do later on is explain what this delta H is and what its relationship is, is to delta E because delta E is what we're looking for. But uh, in this video I just want to go a little bit uh, deeper into the idea of how we can actually calculate Q uh, from either a constant volume measurement or a constant pressure measurement. Okay, so let's talk about the constant volume uh, instrument first. So if you want to measure heat under constant volume, you're going to use a type of calorimeter that's called a bomb calorimeter. So uh, this is uh, the schematic of a bomb calorimeter or a constant volume calorimeter. Um, and if you look at this, basically in the calorimeter there's two compartments. So inside uh, there's a small compartment right here where your reaction uh, that you know you want to carry out is placed in this little bowl and usually there's a wire that runs through this reaction that allows you to start the reaction and when once the reaction starts it's either going to absorb or release heat usually releasing heat in the types of reactions that we run in a bomb calorimeter but this this compartment inside is actually completely closed right so here we have a cutout of it but you know of course in the real uh, instrument this is completely uh, isolated and what you see here is that uh, basically this box stays the same volume uh, after the reaction happens so that's where the constant volume comes in uh, the size of the box doesn't change and as a result the all the energy generated by that reaction will just be released as heat through the box itself through the walls of the box okay now what happens is surrounding the smaller box is a bigger box and the bigger box contains water so it's just a water bath and you can see inside that water bath there are two things here one is a thermometer that measures temperature of the water bath and the other one is a stirrer that basically continuously stirs so that it distributes all the heat that's generated by the reaction uh, throughout the water bath so all the heat is distributed uniformly throughout the water bath okay so then the way you measure heat is remember you just need to multiply C times delta T with C being the heat capacity of the uh, calorimeter in this case so usually what happens here is that we uh, before we actually run a reaction you know that we want to measure the uh, Q4 okay we usually determine the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter first so this is a lot of times referred to as C bomb which is this the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter and the way you do that is you would just run a reaction that you know release a certain amount of energy for example let's say you know you run a reaction that you know exactly releases a hundred joules of energy okay and then what you do is then you measure the um, temperature increase that results from that hundred joule reaction if the temperature increases by you know two degrees Celsius for example then you know the heat capacity of this bomb is a hundred joules energy over two degrees Celsius which is 50 joules per degree Celsius so that's the calorimeter uh, heat capacity and then later on uh, when you want to actually run a new reaction you just run your reaction and then you look at the temperature change and if the temperature changes for 10 degrees in that case then you know that the reaction itself releases 10 degrees times the heat capacity of the bomb which is 50 so it would be 500 joules okay so that's kind of the idea of use uh, of uh, using a bomb calorimeter one of the first things you need to do is you need to determine the heat capacity of the bomb um, calorimeter 
uh, that step a lot of times is called a calibration step and a lot of times in a problem for example you'll see that word being used it says that the bomb calorimeter is calibrated or you'll say uh, you know you'll see something about heat capacity of the bomb so that's something to keep in mind uh, another context is a lot of times people would separate the you can see here in the bomb calorimeter you have certain components that are just kind of components of the box maybe it's the metal that makes up the, the calorimeter you know there's certain uh, pieces of, of uh, solids that make up the calorimeter obviously the metal the plastic pieces and whatnot and then of course you have the water bath okay so a lot of times uh, in, in certain problems you also see that the um, heat capacity would be separated uh, between the bomb components which is the metals and then the water bath component so uh, either way if you think about the reaction itself right if I were to run a reaction here and that reaction releases energy that energy is absorbed equally by the um, water bath as well as these walls right these metal components of the bomb calorimeter so in other words the energy should be uh, you know the total energy released by the reaction will be the sum of the energy that's absorbed by the metal components of the uh, bomb calorimeter plus the water bath component of the bomb calorimeter okay so that's kind of the idea of using the bomb calorimeter now as I said earlier um, you make the inside box uh, have a constant volume in other words the volume of this smaller box doesn't change as a result delta V is equal to zero if delta V is equal to zero uh, the heat that we measure effectively becomes just delta E remember that's from the prior video we derived that equation okay okay so now what I want to do is uh, actually work through an example of using a bomb calorimeter so here it says 0.1964 sample of a substance called quinone is burned in a bomb calorimeter and uh, it has the bomb calorimeter has a heat capacity of 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius. The temperature of the calorimeter increases by 3.2 degrees Celsius. Calculate the energy of combustion of quinone per gram and per mole of substance. Um, one of the things you want to think about here right away is that you're given this heat capacity 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius. So again, just as a reminder, back to the discussion we just had. What basically had happened there is somebody had already calibrated your bomb calorimeter and gave you that number, 1.6 kilojoules per degree Celsius, as the heat capacity of the entire calorimeter, both the water and the metal components combined. Uh, in, like I said, in certain problems, sometimes they might separate those two components. Uh, you know, it just depends on how the problem is phrased. In this particular problem example, it's telling you that that's the heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter okay so you burn this much quinone you get this uh, you get this much temperature increase and you have to calculate energy of combustion per gram and per mole okay so I wrote down some pieces of information that will be useful here which is that the temperature change is 3.2 degrees Celsius the heat capacity of the bomb is 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius if you just look at this in terms of uh, dimensional analysis, you can see that if you multiply these two numbers, you get a unit in kilojoules, right? And of course, that's what our Q is, uh, but you can think about it also from the equation for Q, which is just C times delta T. In this case, is C bomb times the delta T. So in other words, when you burn this much quinone, uh, what you get is 1.56 kilojoules per degree Celsius uh, is the heat capacity, and you multiply that by 3.2 degrees Celsius, and you get a uh, amount of energy for this reaction which is 25 uh, approximately 25.418 kilojoules I'm sorry it's uh, made a mistake there it should be uh, 4.992 kilojoules okay it's what you get if you multiply these two numbers together now remember that this uh, amount of energy was released when you burn 0.1964 grams of the sample okay if you go back to that problem so in other words this is amount of energy you get when you burn 0.1964 grams of the sample okay now as a result if you want the quantity remember the quantity that they asked for is the quantity per gram then of course it just means you divide one number by the other giving you kilojoules per gram and that was the number I was writing earlier that I made a mistake of, uh, of writing earlier uh, up here which is 25.418 kilojoules per gram okay so that's how much you're gonna get uh, per gram of uh, material 
um, for this uh, for this uh, substance quinone. Now, what about per mole of quantity? Well, remember that there's a relationship between grams and mole, and that's your molar mass. So if you just multiply this by the molar mass of quinone, which has units of grams per mole, you'll be able to get the quantity in kilojoules per mole. Okay, and the molar mass of quinone uh, you can get from looking at the formula for quinone, which is given in that uh, problem. It's C6H4O2, so they will add up to 108. So if you were to um, multiply this by 108, what you get is 2745 kilojoules per mole of quinone. Okay. Now, um, you might ask the question, well, why do we need to find these numbers per gram and per mole of material? The reason is because when you tabulate this information, when you put it in reference tables, a lot of times people want to see this in terms of per gram and per mole. It's just the same as heat capacity. You want to express it uh, as specific heat or molar heat capacity. You express it per gram or per mole of material because people want to immediately think uh, about you know energy. If I want to burn, for example, you know, uh, 200 grams of quinone, how much energy am I going to get? I don't want to have to calculate it every time, but if I have this number, I know it's about 25 uh, kilojoules per gram, then if I have 200 grams, I can immediately multiply it by 200 grams to give me the total energy I'm going to get for burning that much quinone. So that's why a lot of times you see that in tables, information are provided per gram or per mole of material.